Now, I know some of you, when you hear the word authority, you guys get excited, right? Because we're, 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 we're thinking, well, we got authority over the devil, right? I, I can trample over every serpent and it, you know, it wouldn't harm me. I could take a drink poison and I wouldn't, I wouldn't die. I can cast out demons, right? The authority that God's given us, right? It's, it's in us, right? But I'm going to talk about something different about authority. It's going to blow your mind. All right, so authority belongs to us whether we realize it or not. But just knowing it is not enough. It's the acknowledgement of acting upon the truth that brings results. So knowing it, but you got to act on it, it's what brings the results. Because you can just know something and never do anything with it. Right? It's like this. If you ride a bicycle, how many have, so I know we're all seasoned. I can't say old. I get in trouble. So we're all seasoned. If you were to ride a bike right now, would you remember how to ride a bike? Huh? Or stay on it, right? Try to stay on it. Why? Muscle memory. Your body recognizes what you have done in the past. So that authority that you have to ride that bike comes back up. So when you act on it, that's when authority begins and it starts to work. So, but in, um, so why do you think God wants you as a believer to know and how to use your authority? Why does he want you to know how to use your authority? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17 in the NLT says this. God uses it to prepare and equip his people for every good work. That's why you have authority because God uses it. You use it. He gives it to you to use to equip his people, you, to every good work. That's why you have authority. That's why you have authority. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says this, but you will receive power when you when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and throughout the end of the world. So if we say God is saying, when you get the power of the Holy Spirit, can we say when God gives you the power and the authority by the Holy Spirit to go and preach about Him into the entire world. That's the authority that I'm going to be talking to you about today. Because that's the authority that you need to have as well, not just to cast out demons, but the authority to go out to preach the good news to God's children. You know, sometimes we get off on that. We forget about that authority. You know, because how many has ever been to a gas station and, and the Lord speaks to you to go minister to somebody, but you get afraid? It's the same type of fear that you have when, a, when you sense something different, like a demon or something. That's that same type of fear that's trying to take you away from knowing what you have. Because I've been there. I've been there a couple of times when I went at a gas station, and I heard, and I didn't do nothing because I was so afraid. I was timid. Right? And I know I'm not the only one that's ever done that. Right? You know? Especially when you're like, oh, uh, and then you walk away, and you're like, well, God, they're like 10 miles now. I can't go back. Remember the story the pastor had when he was in Chick-fil-A, and he was going and getting something, and he saw a lady that was sitting on the side of the corner, and he said, he took off and said, well, Lord, it's too late. And the Lord said, no, it's not. So he had to turn all the way around, drive back, back on 281 to go, and there was the one by uh, on, on, on 4th Street. Drove back and did what God asked him to do. But that's the authority that we have to have as believers. That's something that's given to us. Something that is in our hearts to do. And like I said, yes, authority wasn't just given to the believers to have power over the enemy. Which is a nice thing, right? Thank you, Jesus, for that. But it was also given for us to go and preach the good news. We as believers should not consider humans to be our enemy, enemy or, or whatever you want to call it, enemy. 
even though they are being used by the devil. Right? They're not against you. They're just being used by somebody they don't know that has power over them. And that's what you're there for. Didn't even Jesus said that he was in a, you were going to cast out demons? Sometimes we're going to have to do that. Sometimes when we minister to people, we're going to have to do those kind of things. But the people need to know the love of God as well. Right? We just don't cast a demon out of somebody and say, okay, go about your way. No, we should take that person, nourish them, teach them about Jesus, teach them about the good news about Jesus and what he's done for them. Right? And that's the authority that he's given us to do. Jesus' power and authority transcends all transcends all over all rabble power, right? Whether human, spiritual, or the age to come. He, he triumphs over everything. And he's given you that to do, to go. You know, when that word go means go, that means go. Remember what I said, it takes action to do something. You know, he wasn't just telling the disciples the 12 that were there with him, you 12 go. No, he was talking to us. I mean, we believe that the word of God is speaking to us. He's talking to us. He's speaking straight at us. How many of you guys ever, when you read that, when he said go, you ever feel something inside you just rise up? He's speaking to you. He's telling you to do the things he's asked you to do. All right? <clears throat> Trying to clear my throat, sorry. And we know that Jesus even told his disciples in Mark chapter 6, verse 7, says, and he called his 12 disciples together, beginning sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out demons. See, he's giving you that authority to do as well. But he's also giving you authority to, to tell people about him. Okay? Like I said, we're all going to have to face that. We're all going to have to cast out something. We're all going to have to heal somebody. Jesus said that you will lay hands upon the sick and they shall what? Recover. Right? So it's the authority he's giving you to do those things. God has entrusted, entrusted to his servants the message and the ministry of reuniting God's people back to Christ. That's your ministry. You know, you may never be up here. You may never even stand in this pulpit. But God's called you to do something. The world is out there. The world's not in here. This is where we come to reunite as, as body of Christ. We come here to sharpen our swords. We come here to learn a little more things that we need to know. And then we go out and we're supposed to be sent out into the world, giving our tools that God's given us to share. Right? We're not just here to sit and get fat for ourselves. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. Our church body here is supposed to be sharpening each other. Amen. It's not pastor's job to go out and get people saved. He's just here to teach you how to do it, Amen. right? Through Jesus, right? You're the one. Your responsibility is to go out and teach the good news. Right? But sometimes we get so afraid. We get afraid of what happens if they don't listen. What happens if they don't come to Jesus? That's not your problem. That is not your responsibility. That relies on them. You planted a seed, and that seed needs to grow. But here's one thing. If somebody does, you know somebody who doesn't know Jesus, and you, you've been talking to them, and they get saved, don't, don't leave it as that. Don't just leave it as that and walk away because that person is a baby. You know, like Haley. Haley had a baby this week. She has to nourish that baby. In order for the baby to survive, she has to give it food. In order for the baby to survive, she has to give it warmth. In order for that baby to survive, she has to give it love. In order for that baby to survive, 
until when they turn 18, right? I'm not, Caleb, you're out this week, not this mess. But when they turn to a rifle age, they can start learning from themselves, right? And that's what we need to do for the baby Christians that you go out and minister to. Teach them. Just don't let them to the wayside. Just don't leave them alone. Guide them. Bring them closer. You know, because that's where the love of God is. And that's where we need to be. You know, that's just like Caleb. Yes, he's, he's 18. I'm not going to kick him out of my house yet. You know? But there's things he still needs to learn. Yeah, yeah. You know, he still needs to learn some stuff. You know? But there's decisions. And now, you know, I, I told him the other day, because our kids at our house are not allowed to sit on our couch if we're eating. Okay? They're allowed to sit on chairs, the floor. But they're not allowed to sit on our our recliners, our couches, because we don't want them to mess them up. Only Bethany and I are allowed. And I told Caleb, I said, hey, buddy, you need to join us. <laughs> All right? I said, you, you're turning 18. Now you need to join us on the couches. No, but um, but the, the thing is, is that we got to teach them. There's still things that we got to teach people. We're getting taught every Sunday in here. The Word of God has never, ever failed. It never will ever fail. But the knowledge of God will never fail either. We are hungry for that knowledge. And if you find yourself that you are done listening to God, you might as well just go home. Because I'm going to tell you right now, even in an eternal life, we're going to still learn. We're going to still be learning. They said that God, God's Word is forever. There's things that we don't even know about that we're going to find out in heaven. All right? But he wants to explain those things to you. Ephesians. Read Ephesians. Colossians. Read those. It talks about the mysteries of God that he wants to reveal to you because you are his kids. Because you are adopted by Jesus. That's real authority. When God wants to speak to you and he wants to show you things, that's real authority. That's actually love and that's in a relationship. That he wants to develop with you. So we got to do the same for those that are coming into Christ. Because I'm telling you, when I was saved, I didn't have somebody just come and talk to me. And, you know, hey, you're saved. Okay, what do I do next? You know? A lot of us have been that, we're in that place. What do I do next? Where do I go? How do I keep this relationship with Jesus? How do I pray? You know, in one of our small groups, that was one of the topics. They're like, how do you pray? What is prayer? Is prayer just asking for God? Asking from God? Is that prayer? No, prayer is a relationship. Prayer is actually you spending time with your Heavenly Father. That's prayer. Prayer is not just to come to ask God for something. You know, and I didn't know that. That's what I always thought prayer was, was to ask God for something. It's not wrong to ask God for something, right? But he wants to have a relationship. That's prayer. Prayer is a relationship with God. That means getting up every morning, talking to him as you would talk to your spouse, your whatever, your friends. That's how God wants it. You know, I can spend hours talking to my beautiful wife, but that's what God wants. Gene, that's what your wife wants, and that's what God wants from you. But we have to we have to do those things, right? Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse yeah, chapter ten, three and five. And this is something that I believe what authority truly is. We are humans, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapon, which is his authority. Not worldly weapons to knock down strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. That's authority. That's authority. We, we destroy every obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them how to obey Christ. That's what authority is. That's the weapon that when, when, when you hear the word weapon that God's giving you, 
It's the weapon of the authority of the Holy Spirit. That's God's main weapon for the believer. It's the authority of the believer. You know, I'm excited about when I hear the word authority. Yes, because I want to cast out demons. Yes, I want to go out and do things, God. But I also want to show people who God is. By his authority. By his might. By his strength. So when you come up to a place and God's asking you to do something, remember, he's giving you the Holy Spirit. He's giving you that Holy Spirit, that person to help you build who you are. Build up your character. Don't be afraid. Fear is not of the believer. I like that. I'm going to say this one more time. We, do, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. You know, I love that word. I love that word, destroy. I don't like the word broken. And I said this before. If you break something, it's easy. You can easily put it back together. It can't be put back together. It's broken. But if it's destroyed, it can never be put back together. Never. You know, if I had a an engine that something was wrong with it, I'm pretty sure CJ and Gary can figure out what's wrong with it and bring that engine back to life. But I put a, a, a bomb on that thing and blow it up, there's no way. There's no way because that thing goes to a million pieces. Excuse me a second. I think I'm going to cough. <clears throat> But think about it. We have things in our lives. And we ask God to break it from us. And he does. But we as humans, we go back and we put it back together. We go back and put it back together. So what we need to start saying is, God, destroy this from me. Because I don't want it anymore. And once he destroys it, it can never, ever be put back together ever think about it so that's just me you guys can say destroy broken I'm going to say destroy like when we sing that song break every chain I say destroy every chain right you know I'm not saying it's I'm not going to sit up and say oh that's not of the word of God you know I'm not going to do that but I'm, that's, this is me this is what God has spoken to me I just don't like the word broken. I like the word destroy. We have the power and authority to go out and teach the good news. You have the power and authority to go and teach the good news of our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You have that power. It's been given to you. It's been given you from the Most High. It's a mandate. I hate to say that. It's a mandate. It's part of your Christian duty. It's part of your duty to go out and get people to the kingdom of God. If, you know, Jesus came down. He did come down, and he did that work. But he said, I pass it on to you now. He did it. But he's given us the responsibility, the mandate to go out and finish, his, finish what it needs to be finished. To bring those souls to the heavenly places.